the sense of smell all come together to enchant your sense of style fragrance art by iris good evening everyone i'm taru lamba deputy editor of indian retailer hope everyone has joined the exclusive webinar on leadership thoughts where our thought leader for the day will be discussing about the post pandemic consumer and will tell us how they are planning to meet the changing consumer expectations for the big experience i would request you to make sure that you have high internet speed high speed internet and please use earphones for the best sound experience we are here to discuss the about what post pandemic consumers want in home and lifestyle segment in association with ripple fragrances which is a division of nr group headquartered at mysore the nr group was established in 1948 and is the market leader in incense sticks with its flagship brand cycle agarbatti ripple fragrances has also forayed into the personal care and ear care segment ripple has been a pioneer in the lifestyle home fragrances market in india with its brand iris and iris celest see what i would like would like to tell you with the pandemic forcefully locking up is locking up us in our houses and work from home culture picking up with the trend there has been a new consumer expectation from what they want from the home and home lifestyle to get the latest updates with us please follow us on the social media as well we have with us mr ranga who is the director and ms master fragrance creator of ripple division and n ranga rao sons he is also a partner of nrrs and the director at niso and ranga son aerospace he holds an mba degree from the case university case western reserve university usa and is a graduate from the university of plymouth uk very specialized in business of perfumery he has a creative bent of mind he believes in the fusion of science and art developing novel creations he has a unique expertise in fragrance creation application and evaluation he has been instrumental in establishment and leadership of ripple fragrances welcome mr ranga to take over and share his thoughts on the upcoming trends about the retail industry i would request you all to keep you your questions coming in and we would take them up post mr ranga's talk over to you mr ranga thank you sir namaste and pranam to all the viewers i'd like to start by giving you all an introduction of the nr group the nr group is a diversified business conglomerate which was established in 1948 in mysore We are a family business with a presence in agarbattis, special fragrances, natural extracts, and defense manufacturing services. In recent years, the group has also diversified into the domain of healthcare with uh, mindful PMS clinics, into agri tech, ed tech, and fire and safety. Well, our group has strong roots in the fragrance domain, and essentially, we are three generations of perfumers in the family, and we are vertically integrated. in the fragrance domain where we have a uh, customer facing brands like cycle which is our flagship brand of agarbattis we also have lia iris and stopo which offer special fragrances home and personal care products apart from these consumer brands we also have a company called neso which is a business to business company which manufactures and markets floral extracts you know floral extracts like tube rose and jasmine Our floral extracts are actually used by global fine fragrance houses in their uh, oudi toilette or oudi perfume. In fact, you would probably find our extracts in perfumes such as Jador by Christian Dior. If any of you have heard of it, uh, there's also a perfume called uh, Poison by Christian Dior. Don't worry, it's not it's not Poison. It's 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 a very popular Gardenia and Tube Rose based perfume called Poison by Christian Dior. There are also other brands. uh um, you know including l'oreal estee lauder which use our natural extracts well uh, amongst fmcg companies they are amongst very few that create our own fragrances in house in fact our founder late sri rangarao when he entered the agarbatti business uh, what he realized was that agarbattis are sold loose and even by weight you know you could actually go into the market and buy agarbatti by weight people were not referring to them by by fragrance they were not packaged or branded so he uh, took upon himself learned perfumery 
uh, he started to package and brand agarbattis and used fragrance as a differentiator in selling agarbattis since then like like i mentioned we have uh, we have my father my uncle my cousin and myself we are all creative perfumers and the women in the family even help in blending of the fragrances so fragrances uh, you know you could say the fragrances is in our is in our blood as a group we believe that uh, ethical and collaborative growth and investment in long term relationships is key to our success you know it's a fact that we've had a lot of employees and trade partners who've been with us for over 50 years for us leadership is about elevating the quality of life of our society and our nation we have had many firsts in the industry we are the first carbon neutral agarbatti manufacturer in india and probably in the world we also have been the first iso certified company in agarbattis and and amongst many other things we believe firmly in empowering women entrepreneurs and women we have also been proactive in adhering to international fragrance association norms for fragrance oils that we use in our products even though these regulations are not mandated so we actively proact we proactively adhere to what standards are used for cosmetics or other products even for our agarbattis and any other products that we manufacture today i'll be focusing my discussion on our experience in iris which is a bridge to luxury home fragrance brand you know in the last year the pandemic has impacted humanity in uh, in profound ways it has altered our social habits work culture family dynamics and our daily routine fmcg brands have had a roller coaster ride companies have had to reexamine their business model anticipate demand you know when very when many parts of the country were shut down during during lockdown um uh, companies had to plan inventory on the go they had to anticipate what kind of demand that they'll get in different markets they had to reorient the supply chain and work on optimizing cost and most importantly conserve cash another significant development is the sense of urgency to enhance digital engagements so for companies when when their key markets were under lockdown when delhi and cr malls in delhi and cr or or in mumbai or any other major metro uh, were shut down during the lockdown companies had to innovate ways in which they could engage with their customer so a lot of the companies turned to digital marketing to help focus on customer activation rather than brand building in fact when we talk about luxury brands which are all about touch and feel there was a huge challenge in terms of how they would communicate with their customers without physical interaction with the consumer and the experience of the brand for luxury brands this whole aspect of digitization has been a challenge because with growth in customers who want to buy digital companies that deal in luxury and lifestyle brands have to adapt to new ways of doing business a good place to understand the evolving consumer behavior is to look at the transformation in the concept of the marketing mix you know a lot of people who have joined us today i'm sure will be mbas or will have a marketing background and they would have all heard about or studied the whole concept of the uh, marketing mix of the four p's product price place promotion you know this was the basic um, matrix which was used in understanding how a brand can be positioned well around 2013 the american marketing association redefined the four p's and they said th there is a new dimension that they can be looked at and the whole idea of this new dimension was about about how value is delivered so it's called the four e's which are experience every place exchange and evangelism now what does that mean first consumers don't look to just buy products but they want to buy an experience you know in the pandemic for the first time a lot of people realized that their individual hacks you know that their individual actions have societal consequences if you don't wear a mask and go out you can actually be affecting the health of others people have seen the impact of human civilization around the world you know even when we watched uh, different news channels we got to see that uh, the pollution index in all the big metros which was a big concern pre covid had actually gone down significantly and i also distinctly remember watching the news and seeing how 
the Himalayas were visible from uh, Jalandhar for the first time. So we could actually see the snow-capped mountains from Jalandhar, which people have not seen for more than three decades. So people remember all these and people are becoming very conscious of being responsible and buy brands with positive, with positive social and environmental impact. The idea of conscious consumption versus con conspicuous consumption, especially in lifestyle brands is further fueled by the need for the millennials and the generation Z for an engaging emotional connection with brands that have a strong purpose. So consumers are looking for brands or companies that have deep rooted purpose and values as a part of their proposition. Marketing of luxury brands need to evolve from its focus on just aspiration to one of inspiration. It's about inspiring the consumer to see how the brand can provide authentic experiences. So it's not about just buying a brand to consume the physical attributes, but it's about experiences that they can get from a brand. You know, in keeping with uh, this thought, Iris had introduced the whole concept of brand signature fragrances a couple of years ago, where, where the, our consumers can actually create unique olfactory signature for their user space. Now this will make, this will work mainly for service oriented industries. We started off with uh, a company called uh, Windflower Resorts, which is a chain of uh, holiday resorts based around uh, the South of India, where we created uh, a brand signature fragrance for them. And they could use this fragrance in the form of sprays, rediffusers, vaporizers in their lobby and rooms of the resorts. So when a guest actually walks in and when they, if the guest walks into any resort, whether it's in Mysore, Coor, or any other location of theirs, they will actually experience a unique fragrance, which will become a part of their brand experience. Apart from this, our parent company, Cycle Agrabatis, have also launched a concept called MindSense on our online store, cycle.in, where customers can actually customize every part of the Agarbatti pack, including the type of stick, fragrance, and even the choice of packing material. They can even choose between sustainable packing materials, including butter paper. So we give the consumer the choice of being conscious and making their own choice. We can also add a personalized name and message on our incense as well. Now this for us has been a great learning because we can actually get to experience firsthand what consumers want, what kind of fragrances they're looking for, what kind of strength of fragrances they're looking for, and give us a lot of insights into uh, their buying habits and behavior. With such initiatives, digital platforms can be used not just for transactional uh, purposes, but we can also engage with the consumer and build long lasting relationships. The second change or the second dimension of the, uh, the four P's that I was talking about is place. The change is that it's not about where or which retail store you can buy the, brand, the product or the brand in, but the whole idea that you can buy the brand anywhere or in every place. So the new reality is that consumers prefer to engage with brands at their convenience, when they want or where they want. They can sit online, they can be on their mobile phone, or they can walk into a store. So consumers have the choice of where, when, and how to engage with their brands. Here, a lot of brands have carved out their own paths, depending on the type of product and the level of engagement to see what kind of model that they want to build. We've seen that brands that operate in their own brand stores have moved towards an omni-channel model where the customer gets a seamless experience of the brand across channels, whether they're offline, or online. For example, if a customer is browsing a blog and wants to place an order about the product, they can place an order on the blog and they can choose to walk into the nearest store and pick up the product as well. I've seen this example in the case of Bata. In fact, it was on the, uh, uh, in the, on the Indian uh, uh, retailer webinar that I actually saw the Bata CEO talk about their omnichannel uh, presence and their activities, and they have done it quite successfully. Other FMCG brands that have a big retail footprint who are present in, in uh, millions of retail outlets, small stores, including ABC and Kirana stores, they've adapted a multi-channel model 
which ensures that customers can reach the brand through multiple channels. But even here, they've combined two or more channels, such as using their social media page and the website to create more engaging experiences. At Iris, we have taken the initiative of using hyper-local marketing from our Iris Aroma boutiques. We have about six boutiques across India. Apart from that, we are present in close to about 3,000 uh, retail outlets uh, for Iris in India. With our hyper-marketing, local, uh, with our hyper-local marketing initiative at Iris, we share real-time inventory data with third-party platforms to target prospective customers and deliver products to their doorstep. Irrespective of uh, the model that any company adopts, innovation in the supply chain is key to enable uh, quick adaptation to the changing demand. You know, a case in point is that Flipkart came out with uh, data that estimates that almost 60% of online sales this Diwali, which, which is in 2020, came from tier two and three, three cities, which was actually a major uh, change from what they were used to in the previous year. So they had to adapt their supply chain or different companies have to adapt their supply chain to cater to tier two and three, tier three city demand overnight. So companies should be nimble in adapting technologies to reach products quickly to the customer. In 2021, e-commerce marketplaces, online grocery, e-pharmacies, and social commerce are expected to see a lot of, a lot of action. The entry of Reliance Geomart in online grocery and the emergence of super apps, you know, such, as the, uh, such as WhatsApp with their uh, payment option will certainly spur online sales. The future of retail will see tools like IoT, augmented reality, and virtual reality that will help shoppers engage with the brand in a better way. Some examples are L'Oreal's virtual tool where a consumer can actually see the kind of uh, hair color that they can use with their own image. So you can actually uh, see how you look with different hair color options and then choose the kind of hair color product that you want. Another app is called Perfect You Can, where people can again log in and uh, they can take a photograph of themselves and the app will enable them to play around with the kind of uh, color cosmetics that they can actually use on themselves. And a lot of brands have actually started using this overseas for their consumers to actually see how color cosmetics would work on them before they make a purchase. The next change in the four piece is the price. Now price actually is taking a backseat to value. Now let me ask you this question. How do you value an experience? Can you actually put on value on the experience that you have? Well, MasterCard's iconic campaign is built around the whole thought that some experiences are priceless. For an Indian consumer who loves to bargain, is there anything beyond price? You know, the idea of exchange actually looks beyond the concept of price. To understand value, a consumer needs to look at uh, how to engage with the brand. Uh, a typical example will be, um, you know, Domino's, where uh, Domino's promised to deliver pizza in 30 minutes at your doorstep in all the major cities in India. And they were doing this much before the pandemic. So this is real value to the customer. If you go on Swiggy right now, Domino's will not be the cheapest pizza, which people still prefer to buy Domino's. They never talk about the fact that they were the cheapest pizza, but they only focus on the value that they deliver by having a pizza at your doorstep in 30 minutes or your money back. In services, value can also mean respect for the customer's time, which is a real premium, especially amongst uh, the millennials and the Generation Z. This is achieved in different ways. For example, Max Co Mac Cosmetics, you know, Mac Cosmetics is an international color cosmetics brand. When they started off, with their own kiosks. They were providing an expert dermatologist to advise them and give them makeup lessons and professional application tips to the customers as value to the customer. That will save time for them to go and research all this, these things by themselves. Some companies have adapted social or cost-based marketing as a route by contributing to a cause with every purchase. For instance, Nestle with their educate a girl child, life boy, with help a child reach five years of age. 
and Mahendra with Seed Arise campaign. I'm sure all of you will see, would have seen any one of these campaigns on social media. These initiatives make consumers feel empowered and that they're doing something positive and are contributing to create change. Another trend is about going green. You know, the whole idea is that conspicuous consumption or just over consuming products is on the way out and people are looking at conscious consumption. Conscious consumption is about being responsible and looking at sustainable products and not only products, people are actually looking into the production processes. So people value the fact that the products are safe and natural, but at the same time, they want to know that the products and the packaging are nature friendly and don't have a negative impact on the environment. An example of this is Shishido, that's a Japanese uh, color cosmetics prestige brand, have recently launched a range of cosmetics called Bomb, which is based on coexistence. Basically what they're doing is they use upscaled wood and reusable containers to actually create the whole idea that their packaging, packaging is sustainable and they're one with nature. So demand will move away from single use plastics to well-crafted, sustainably sourced products where the value comes, value or the status comes from being socially responsible as a consumer. The final change in the four Ps is about promotion. Now the whole idea here is that promotion is becoming evangelism. By making the brand experience meaningful and the exchange valuable, brands can tap into the potential of customers to evangelize a brand. You know, you can ask any Apple iPhone user, you know, I'm guilty as well with the iPhone. So for any iPhone user will tell you that the iPhone is the best product that can, they can ever be. And they will actually market the iPhone on behalf of the company. How is this possible? This is because Apple actually built the brand experience and the engagement of their customers in a way in which they swear by the brand. In recent times, paid advertising and celebrity endorsements are put on the back burner, whereas companies are looking at creating individual brand evangelists that will spread the word about the brand to the consumer. This is achieved through content marketing, social media, public relations, and uh, what we see a lot of, which is influencer posts or blog posts and through word of mouth marketing. As life settles slowly into the new normal, brands will look to offer transformative experiences. This might mean that wellness brands will look at lessons on meditation or access to wellness experts and opportunities to learn new skills for the customers. So I think in this way, fundamental understanding about marketing is changing and companies have to evolve with the changing consumer mindset in order to be relevant. Thank you and over to you, Charu. Thank you, Mr. Ranga. It was a pleasure to know about the trends that you have recently shared. And I particularly liked how sense of urgency has raised due to pandemic to go to shift to digital media. Before I take up audience questions, here are a few things which I would like to know. How has been the journey of the brand so far? Please share your secret recipe of success with us. You know, as, as I'm addressing the Irish brand, um, our uh, flagship company is, uh, is Enron Ground Sons and, uh, and Cycle Brand. As Cycle Brand, we have been the market leaders in Agabatis for several decades. And we have been a part of our patrons' puja space. So our Agabatis are actually used in the puja room. And the context of usage of Agarbatis is for prayer. Even though, in fact, Agarbatis are the most effective form of fragrancing any space because they're inexpensive and they work very, very well. But consumers' needs were evolving. So when I actually got back from my MBA back in 2003, both Arjun and I, who handled the uh, fragrance vertical for our group, we saw the opportunity created by some key drivers for home fragrance products. These drivers were the increase in air-conditioned spaces. You know, we saw that more people were using air conditioning and with air conditioning, they use carpets as well. And with carpets, there's the issue of odor. So people certainly are going to be using more fragrances and more home fragrances. 
There was also an increase in nuclear families and uh, disposable income was on the rise, which meant that people were willing to accessorize their home and people were actually interested in making home decor accessories an extension of their personality. So they wanted to invite guests to their home and actually show off their home and their uh, personality. And finally, with increasing work pressure and stress, people were looking for solutions to de-stress. And home fragrance and wellness products were actually a very interesting idea to take forward. With this, we evolved uh, the whole guiding philosophy of Iris, which is to create complete sensory experiences through fragrance and form design that enhances people's everyday lives. So the key points here are that we want to create a brand where people will use it proudly and display the brand and they will feel that they, it's a part of their decor. We also wanted to launch products which are part of people's everyday lives. It won't be only for special occasions or gifting. To achieve this vision, we initially focused on uh, the three pillars of competence for Ripple, product design, fragrance design, and delivery system design. Product design has to do with uh, design of different materials. You know, each one of our products has a different material. For example, you can see here, because I have a virtual screen, it's not very clear. This is a glass reed diffuser. Whereas this particular product is a fragrance vaporizer. It's in ceramic. Each one has its own decor connotation and each one is used in a different way. When we launched Iris Home Fragrances, we were, we were pretty much the only player in the market and all the retail formats were also emerging. For example, home improvement stores were just gaining traction around then. This was way back in 2006 or 2007. At that point of time, in order to uh, promote the brand and create awareness of new categories, we took a call of recruiting brand staff in most of our home improvement and discount retail stores that we were presented. We, uh, we realized back then that one-on-one -on -one interactions with the consumer would actually help them understand how to use the product and give an understanding of the benefits and application of each and every uh, product that we were in. We also constantly authored articles in uh, home fragrance, uh, in, in home magazines and woman-oriented lifestyle magazines. And we have also been a first mover in the digital space where, you, where we use social media to leverage different topics that we could discuss with our consumers, including trends and uses of home fragrances and trends and uses of aromacology as a concept. When we started, there were no prize norms that were established. So we had to actually get into what kind of prize should, should be there for the product categories. We set the pricing to establish the brand as a bridge to luxury. Like I mentioned, we wanted more people to use this and people to use it as a part of their everyday lives. So we positioned the brand as a bridge to luxury brand. Over time, consumers have come back and we're very happy to see that consumers are actually buying a lot more of our refill oils, which is testament to the fact that uh, they're actually using the product and making it a part of their, uh, part of their everyday lives. We did face a little competition from uh, private label brands who imported our product, the home fragrance products from China, but we've stayed ahead of the curve by focusing on new product formats, innovation in fragrances, innovation in new delivery systems. We got into things like uh, ultrasonic misters um, and other new formats of fragrances. And we also paid attention to evolving trends in fashion uh, in India. You know, trends in fashion will eventually impact trends in uh, in home decor outlets, trends in home linen, trends in home furnishing, color, texture, um, you know, pattern designs and so on. So we paid attention to that and we actually came out with new trends, which we, new trends, new textures, which we thought will be relevant. According to you, how has consumer behavior changed over a decade? Please throw some light on the impact of pandemic on the consumer behavior. You know, I went over this, a couple of these points uh, in my talk uh, earlier. For one, from a luxury brand perspective, the key word today is about conscious consumption and not conspicuous consumption. So consumers are looking at conscious brands, brands with a purpose, brands with a message of sustainability and positive impact, impact on the environment. The other thing that I mentioned uh, is that inspiration is sought after rather than aspiration of, I aspire to buy a brand to be perceived in a different way. 
you know that fundamental thought is actually changing into consumers actually wanting to buy a brand because they believe in the purpose of the brand the other thing is that in recent times there has been a surge in uh, wellness regimes topical products and supplements that promote immunity you know if you go online or on social media you'll see a whole host of products that talk about immunity boosters and so on so consumers are actually looking at uh, ways to boost their immunity the other uh, theme that i see is mindful beauty you know is is actually the order of the day this goes back to the whole idea of uh, using natural ingredients you know customers are tending towards more of what goes into the product formulation as well is it organic certified are the packaging materials and the accessories used sustainable you know these are again questions which are asked over and over again and in, another important trend is that uh, the ic and which we are actually moving forward on is that consumers are actually looking to uh, bring home experiences that they would have actually got otherwise you know you know people would have gone to spas people would have uh, gone to a salon they are looking at how they can create these experiences at home so they are actually looking at ready kits which help them to relax or de stress so can they get a kit of massage oils can they get uh, uh, you know portly bags can they get any other kind of form of uh, aids which will help them de stress and relax these are the kinds of things that consumers are looking for so the indian home fragrance market has been growing exponentially what are the new trends that we can expect going ahead according to you how bright is the future of home fragrance market in india you know the home fragrance market as per different market reports the home fragrance market which consists of uh, two main categories one is the functional home fragrances and the other is the wellness or lifestyle home fragrances under functional home fragrances you have products like uh, aerosol room fresheners which is a big category you have car fresheners you have uh, gel sachets which are used in tough order markets you have electric plugins and uh, you have other uh, emerging gel formats as well in the wellness space you have products uh, and categories like rediffusers vaporizers candles potpourri vaporizer oils and a lot of other products uh, gift sets also which are a part of that so in terms of uh, trends that we see for the future in terms of future growth the entire category is looking at about an 18 to 20% uh, growth annually for the next uh, couple of years in the wellness space this is on the functional space the 18 to 20% growth in the wellness category the growth is higher because the base is quite small and uh, you know uh, if not for the pandemic period the wellness category was actually growing at a compound annual growth rate of almost about 35 to 40% now apart from uh, the growth rate the kind of trends that we see generally in terms of how home fragrances are going to grow in future um one of them is certainly that people are looking for more customized offerings and we as a brand will certainly look at uh, building on that so we will actually use digital as a medium to understand customers unique requirements whether it be gifting or for any special occasion and we will actually uh, provide pro customers customized products for them you know we are already doing that with incense but we will do more of that with uh, with our wellness products great to know uh, the, uh, the other thing that i would like to say is that you know as a company uh, we are uh, Uh, people want with customization people want more and more of uh, the kind of accessories that they want in their own home personalization accessories play a very very important part and the final thing is that we're going to create new delivery systems i think ultrasonic misters nebulizers these are products where customers can actually use natural essential oils and uh, uh, they, they are great in terms of uh, wellness and other things that people are doing today including uh, helping them with meditation yoga or anything else that people want to get into share with us the expansion plans of the brand will you be concentrating more on physical presence or online presence like i mentioned earlier with iris we are all we are present uh, currently in close to about 3000 uh, different form of retail outlets our uh, brand philosophy and vision is that we want we want iris to be a part of people's everyday lives so this means that there will be some retail expansion but i think the opportunity uh, currently is for us to focus a lot more on digital and we will uh, we will be focusing on growing in digital significantly uh, in the next couple of years we've already tied up with uh, a lot of the partners including uh, a lot of the aggregators uh, e-commerce platforms including amazon 
uh, Flipkart and many other platforms. And we will, we will look to grow more there as well. Who is your target audience? Well, we have primarily uh, three buckets uh, in terms of our uh, end consumers. One is the retail consumer who buys our products, whether uh, in brick and mortar stores or online. The other is the hospitality buyer. They are the purchase managers in hotels, institutions, offices, and retail stores that, are, that use their products for their own uh, housekeeping purposes. And finally, uh, we also do quite a lot of corporate gifting, which includes uh, doctor's gifting and gifting for institutions on special occasions, including Diwali, which is a big thing for us. We got to know that Ripple Fragrances is launching a wide range of lifestyle products like activity, luxury bath, and body skincare range. We would like to we would like to know what are the new products that you are planning to launch going ahead. Yeah, like I mentioned, uh, you know, the, we we see a very strong emerging trend for the whole idea of bringing the spa experience home. That is one major thing. The other trend is about using natural and organic certified products. So with our luxury bath and body range, we are actually getting into a range of products which are based on 100% EcoCert certified ingredients. So these are 100% certified organic ingredients that we are using in our products. And these are bath and body products. So we have looked at the whole bathing ritual and we've come up with the products that will help people uh, in, uh, in their own self-grooming with natural um, actives and we have positioned the whole product range based on aromacology. Let me show you just one or two products. These will out, be out in the market very, very soon. Now, this is, uh, this is a body yogurt that you can see here. I'm not sure whether it's very, very clear because I'm on a virtual uh, background here, another part of augmented reality. These are one of our uh, hand creams. And when it comes to uh, the other uh, positive, uh, positivity range of products, the whole idea is I was talking about customers need for de-stressing at home. So what we have uh, done is that we have a basket of aromatherapy products which use 100% natural essential oils, which includes products like massage oils. We will also provide them with uh, helpful aids like a portly bag or uh, you know eye masks or face masks. They, they can actually use essential oils for certain things. So the fragrance applications that we have configured them for are things like de-stress, breathe easy, sleep well, and even uh, muzzle relax. So we will provide convenient kits for consumers, including oils. We will also provide massage candles, bath salts, and several other products which will come out. Pleasure to know about all these things. So. Uh... Before we go ahead, let us take a few questions from the audience. First question is, how are you leveraging social media to educate consumers about the home lifestyle products? Yeah, I uh, went over uh, the whole aspect of social media earlier. We have done a couple of things. Uh, Pre-COVID, we had actually tied up with uh, a lot of artists and we used art as a platform to promote our brand because we saw a huge synergy with, uh, uh, with, with Iris, which is based on uh, art and artisans and music as a form of art. You know, there's a lot of synergy between music and fragrance when you think about creativity. So that was one uh, platform that, that we took. Um, apart from that, we have leveraged on social media by interacting with uh, influencers a lot in the past. We are actually encouraging uh, a lot of people to come and experience the products. And uh, they have been kind enough to uh, talk about how they've used the products, how they've liked them, how the products have benefited them. Apart from all these, we consistently update consumers with the emerging trends in fragrances, with the use of fragrances in different seasons, use of fragrances and home fragrance products in different uh, parts of the home. So we constantly keep consumers updated with uh, informative tidbits that will help them in using uh, home fragrance products. We have a question which is like, how has e-commerce fared for you during the pandemic season? So e-commerce for us, uh, in the initial period of the lockdown, e-commerce was really a challenge. But I think for the entire industry, and especially for Iris as a category, there was a huge spurt in e-commerce during uh, this Diwali season. And I was also reading a statistic that uh, for the majors, including Amazon and uh, Flipkart and all the other e-commerce majors put together, this Diwali was almost, uh, almost about 70 times bigger than uh, the previous Diwali for them. 
I've read estimates uh, online that uh, the total sales for this Diwali was close to around uh, uh, close to around three billion dollars for e-commerce uh, retail uh, platforms put together. So for us, this Diwali actually saw a spurt. We actually achieved almost three times the sales that we did in the previous Diwali. So I've seen a significant resurgence in uh, online sales post July, um, August, you know, getting into September, October, it has increased significantly. So the new products that we'll be launching, are you planning to launch at Pan India or are you targeting any specific markets for that? So the initial phases of launch will be focusing on uh, all a pilot launch. The initial phases of launch for the bath and body range, our products will be available in, uh, in uh, select uh, stores of Praxis, Lifestyle, in our own Iris Aroma boutiques. They will also be available in Home Center. These are all going to be launched in the next one month. Oh, pleasure to know. They will also be present uh, certainly on online platforms, including Amazon uh, and uh, Amazon Flipkart and a lot of the other major uh, e-commerce platforms. Thank you, Mr. Ranga, for your for sharing these in insightful thoughts. And thank you, everyone, for attending this session of Thought Leadership Series. I'm sure it must have been an enriching experience for all of you. To stay updated on the latest happenings in the retail industry, please follow us on our social media handles. Have a good day.